Hey everyone, as always, thank you for joining me today and welcome to my Wonder Woman 1984 special review. Gosh, I cannot believe I finally got a chance to see this movie. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to get a chance. <laughs> they kept delaying and delaying and the pandemic got in the way. But anyway, I am finally excited to finally be here to talk to you with you guys about the movie. First things first, before I begin, I want to hope that everyone is having a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. New Year's is coming up. Let's hope that 2021 will be much better than 2020. I think it's pretty safe to say that 2020 kicked a lot of our asses this year. But hey, we're here now, so without any further delay, let's get right on into our meat. As always, when I do movie reviews, I start off with what I liked first, and I'm happy to report that there was a lot to like here with Wonder Woman 1984. I was blown away completely, hands down, loved the film. Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot, you guys delivered it, knocked it out of the park once again. I am very proud of you and what you've achieved here. This is by far my favorite film of the DCEU, and I hope that we get to see you guys come back again for Wonder Woman 3. Across the board, all of the performances were really good. Gal Gadot, she was a little shaky here and there, but I really was sold on her commitment to nonviolence and hope, and I, she was really good. I, in the more emotional scenes, she was a lot stronger this time around than she was in the first Wonder Woman. Chris Pine, um, I gotta tell you, Chris Pine is probably my favorite of the Hollywood Chris's. He was a delight to have back. His awe and, and wonder of all of the technical achievements that we had achieved as, as a species since his time in World War I, it was very elegantly captured. I love the twist that they did on the whole fish out of water thing with him. They didn't play it for laughs this time around. They played it for more heart and emotion. That was the right call. Um, both Pedro Pascal and Kristen Wiig were fantastic in their roles. If Kristen Wiig in particular, I thought she did very well as playing both the dual role of Barbara Minerva and the later role of Cheetah. I loved her interactions with Diana. I thought they had a really great chemistry too. I loved their friendship. I even loved their little fight that they had in the White House when for a moment they seemed to be uh, fighting on the same side, but then they started turning on each other. I really enjoyed that. Pedro Pascal, even through some of his cheesier lines, he really sold the character of Maxwell Lord. He was committed and his interactions with his son, Alistair, really provided a lot of the emotional ground to this film. Next up, I want to talk about the visuals and direction. Patty Jenkins has improved dramatically as a director since The Last Wonder Woman. I really honestly think they should just hand the reins over to DCEU to, D, the DCEU to her. I thought she was phenomenal. All of the wide sweeping shots in the beginning of Themyscira, going through all the obstacle courses across the island. The shots of Diana learning to fly in the clouds. It was breathtakingly beautiful. The scenes of her and Steve flying in the invisible jet through the fireworks and how the invisible, invisible jet parted the clouds. It was very well done. Probably the best effects in the film. How they achieved the invisibility effect. I, I, I was amazed. I thought that was so beautiful. It really reminded me so much of the special quiet scene in the town square from the first Wonder Woman when Steve and Diana were dancing. It was hands down beautiful chef's kit. Um, I thought that the fight between Wonder Woman and Cheetah was really well done. I love the fight choreography. I love that Diana was for the most part playing defense and that scene of uh, uh, Cheetah trying to claw her way into the metal that was really fierce and scary at times. Um, that was probably my favorite action scene of the film. Um, I thought that the parallels between the Richard Donner uh, Superman movies from the 70s and 80s were very well done. I grew up with those Superman movies. I've always leaned towards DC because Batman and Superman were the heroes that I grew up with and to see though uh, the Richard Donner Superman movies really brought back to life and tone in this movie. It was really special. I thought that it works really well with the character of Wonder Woman. The score, I mean, what is there to say about Hans Zimmer that hasn't already been said before? Getting Hans Zimmer aboard the DCEU was probably the best decision or choice that Warner Brothers made. I really enjoyed all of his uh, reinterpretations of Junkie XL's main motif for Wonder Woman from BBS. Hands down, just a really great score. One of his best, really bombastic, campy, but it matches its film's tone, so it really works really well. The makeup and costumes. I love me some 80s hair, 80s outfit. I knew that we were going to be getting a ton of great 
big hair and colorful outfits and they did not disappoint i uh, loved all of patty jenkins's outfits all of her long flowing skirts and uh, slacks and sweaters she looked very comfortable i want to get her to pick out my wardrobe um all of cheetah's outfits after she transformed i was obsessed with especially her fur coat in the middle of the movie i loved it i thought that her fashion choices really helped sell the transformation of her character into cheetah even because she we didn't get an actual transformation scene so I thought the clothes and her gradual changing of her outward appearance really helped match um, the transformation into the character and even the bank robbers had some pretty nice outfits the curly haired bank robber with his shirt and the striped tank top I really liked his outfit uh, I thought that the uh, close-ups on Cheetah when she was transformed I thought the practical effects makeup that they used on her looked really convincing I love the red eyes the slicked back hair the fangs oh it really it was all top-notch well done now let's talk about the story for a little bit one of my biggest complaints with superhero movies is that there never seems to be any real stakes when it comes to the heroes or their loved ones i never really feel like they're in any danger they're immune to most damage they can't be hurt here they correct that by siphoning off some of diana's powers in, in exchange for her wish that she has i thought that was really well done it helped really sell her plight and it, it made her feel more torn between having to keep Steve and keeping her powers. Her fight with Cheetah in the White House is really hard to watch because of how pummeled she was getting by Cheetah. She was covered in blood, her hair was all messed up. I mean, it was hard to watch, and that, that was good. I, I enjoyed that. And there, there were real consequences in this movie. There were the consequences for the wishes and the aftermath. It wasn't glossed over. They, they, they stuck the landing. They didn't just wave a magic wand and poof, everything's just suddenly back to normal i mean granted all the wishes did disappear but we still have all the destruction um cheetah is pro uh, cheetah and diana are probably never going to be friends again which is really sad i was hoping to see more of their uh friendship the be careful what you wish for plot even though it's not the most innovative of plots i thought it was really well done here i had a nice fresh take on it i thought it worked really well in our especially in our day and age of excess and instant gratification which is something that was really prevalent in the 80s too so i thought that the 80s setting was very appropriate here also, I thought the motivations for both villains were very well done and fleshed out. And unlike the first movie, I truly understood why each character was lusting after the power that they did. Especially with Cheetah. After, after seeing her in the beginning and seeing how she was looked over by everybody in her office, I could tell that she really enjoyed having all this newfound attention and power. And she sold it. I really felt for her plight because I think all of us know what it feels like to be to be alone to want to just be accepted to just want a friend and so those scenes were really i uh, reson resonated with me i i was really impressed and last but not least what i think this movie really excelled in was really delivering on the heart and emotion of the story the first wonder woman really surprised me and just how invested i was in diane and steve's love story and that was carried over expertly here their chemistry remains intact the scenes with diana before uh, steve showed up when she was at lunch and you know she went back to her apartment alone and you saw all the photos from the uh, friends that she made from the first wonder woman they all eventually died she really sold her isolation and loneliness and that's something i really identified with but seeing Steve and Diana back in action, just him being in awe of how much humanity has achieved, them working together, their dual a partnership, I thought they worked really well off of each other. Steve really holds his own even without any superpowers. And by far the most emotional scene for me was the scene in which Diana and has to say goodbye to Steve. It's a really heartfelt moment. It's really set up really well. There's chaos in the streets everywhere, and I thought that their lines to each other were so emotional, and I was welling up, tearing up. It was so heartfelt and so sincere, and just the way that Diana had to tear herself away from Steve, because she couldn't bear to look at him anymore, and she knew she had to say goodbye, and it, I, it was an incredibly tough decision for her to make. It was an incredibly tough scene to watch, but I thought... Chris Pine and Gal Gadot really sold that moment. And also the relationship between Maxwell Lord and his son, while I don't think it was as developed as Steve and Diana's relationship, because they weren't in the first movie, they truly were another emotional center for me. And just seeing Alistair, his son, 
crying out for his dad to come back and he wishing that he was still here and then him wandering the streets alone and Maxwell finally coming to terms with what he had done and going off to save his son and then the scene with them at the end when he apologizes and hopes hopes for his forgiveness but then his son tells him that he doesn't need to that he still loves him just because he's his dad it was so powerful that really resonated with me it was oh my gosh it was just I, I my mask that I was wearing was just soaking wet from all the tears by the time the movie was done I haven't cried like that during a movie in so long and I knew this movie was going to affect me because I knew about most of these twists and spoilers before going in the fact that the movie was still able to have that emotional impact on me and affect me the way that it did it just proves how good of a director Patty Jenkins is and how much they how much she really achieved here all right so now that all the pros are out of the way let's talk about some of the stuff that I feel like could have been improved namely it was the effects for me I don't know how this movie sat on a shelf for over a year and then it didn't take that time to polish some of the effects I cheetah for the most part I thought she looked really good there are some people saying that it reminded them of cats I don't see that at all. I thought the effects when she was brought out of the water when her fur was really damp, those were probably the best. It, it was, she looked a little animated in some parts, but it was by far the most, it was far from the most egregious um, offender of that. I thought a lot of the scenes with Diana and the clouds, even though they were beautiful and I really enjoyed them and they really captured that Richard, uh, Richard Donner Superman quality. Um, they weren't the best. I thought that they could have maybe used a couple more hours of rendering um that she just looks too separated from the rest of the cloud and some of the clouds looked a little fake too and looked more like a rob ross painting than an actual um real life setting it just it didn't feel like diana was fully there from time to time it's just something looked off about it and then some of the shots of her running into the camera um and some of the wire work i look i appreciate patty jenkins going for practical effects and trying to do most of the stunts with wire work she said that they invented some new technology because most people are used to doing this with green screens and cgi and look i will always champion practical effects over cgi this that being said though i feel like maybe the cgi made it would have worked a little bit better this time around because it was just more noticeable the the movements were just too fluid and the way she would glide into a scene it just it didn't it didn't ring true to me um and so in that in that regard i don't think patty jenkins was as successful as she wanted to be now let's talk about the screenplay for a little bit i did feel at some points that the movie was running a little bit too long i never was like checking for the time and i was always invested in the movie but there were a couple scenes here and there i felt like maybe could have been trimmed maybe left as deleted scenes for the dvd i thought that the Steve trying on outfits it was just a bit too on the nose of a reference to the first movie I didn't think it was funny really that they put the best jokes in the um trailer and it just went on for a little bit too long I didn't think it was as practical or as good as the scene from the first Wonder Woman with uh, Diana trying on all the dresses that made a bit more sense to me there were a couple moments too in the beginning mostly when background characters will were or side characters, secondary characters, they were just acting really bizarre and they were doing things that just didn't make sense. They were outright obnoxious. Like for instance, all of Barbara, all, all of Barbara's peers and coworkers forget about her or they ignore her. She trips and falls and nobody goes to help her pick up any of her stuff. I mean, granted that was so Diana could come in and they could be introduced, but they didn't seem like real characters to me. It, it felt, it just felt off. And also when some of the secondary characters in the finale of the film were making their wishes, I couldn't really understand what some of their wishes were or what the consequences of their wishes were. Like the Egyptian guy, I don't know what the consequences of his wish were. Um, other than he just lost his security team. But that's because Maxwell Lowe took it from him. And the way that they brought back Steve, I didn't think made a whole lot of sense because I, I understand it's a reference to Heaven Can Wait, but I've never seen that movie. And I, get, I guarantee you a lot of people who saw this movie probably have never even heard of Heaven Can Wait, let alone have seen it. I get it was a popular movie back when it came out, but it's over 40 years ago. Um, and they can make nukes appear out of nowhere but they can't bring steve back just as steve i don't know i feel like it would have been better if they had just brought him back because him being in the body of somebody else it all opens up a lot of unfortunate implications such as consent and potential rape 
<laughs> but I'm not going to get too much into that. It didn't really bother me too much because the filmmakers just glossed over it. They didn't even talk about it. Um, but I also I wonder what, what was going on with that guy while he was out cold for like a couple days, maybe a week. Um, I love their little moment at the end of when they met. And I like that they didn't ask each other out. He's just kind of on his way. It was a nice, cute little moment. Um, that guy is in a bunch of Hallmark Christmas movies, so I thought it was really fitting that he was in the um, end of the movie with the Christmas scene. I thought it was funny. The opening scene, I thought it was really well shot. I, I liked it. I liked seeing Connie Nielsen, Robin White, Wright, and all of the Amazons back. And that being said, the scene really only served as a means to introduce the lesson of the movie. Be careful what you wish for, taking shortcuts. You can't take the easy way out. And I thought that was good, but we never really went back to the Themyscira after that. We didn't see any of the Amazons. And so I just, I would have liked to have seen uh, maybe another quick flashback or maybe have Robin Wright and um, Connie Nielsen in the little flashback we got of um, Linda Carter scene or she shows up in the after credit scene as the i don't know her name but she, as the amazon that wore the golden armor they could have been had her put in that flashback scene i don't know i just i thought they could have um just done a little bit more with them skira and last but not least this is a really minor criticism but just for me personally i was expecting a bit more with cheetah i thought she has a lot to do in the film and i loved when she was helping diana uh recover information about the artifacts and so I thought she did have a part to play. I'm seeing a lot of reviews saying that she was underutilized or wasted. I don't think she was at all. She definitely had a part to play throughout the entire script. It's just that her transformation into Cheetah kind of comes out of nowhere or is really abrupt. And I would have liked to have actually seen an actual scene of her transform uh, transforming because I feel like there's some really cool body horror elements they could have explored upon and to having her like be in rithering pain maybe through the fur sprouting out of her arms I don't know and I feel like it would have been another great acting moment for Kristen Wiig but uh, we didn't get it but I still thought she did pretty well and I thought Cheetah was really well utilized um, so yeah, that's just a minor Chris. And that is my spoiler review of Wonder Woman 1984. I am so happy to finally get to share this with you guys. Let me know what you guys thought down below. I would love to start the conversation with you. Let me know any comments, concerns, criticisms. Did you like Wonder Woman? Were you not able to deal with the new tone, the shift, the pivot, and style, and the campy or cheesiness of it? I personally loved it. I, I warts and all, I thought it was fantastic. I, and also, I had just been dying to have a movie theater experience, and this satisfied that need for me. I hadn't been to a theater since March, so that might be why I liked it so much. It might be a little biased. I love DC. I love the first Wonder Woman. I can't wait for more DC comic book movies. Warner Brothers, Patty Jenkins, you guys are a wonderful team. Please pay her the money that she deserves so she can keep her on your team. That was some nonsense bullshit. I can't believe you guys did that to her. And she has every right to jump over ship to Disney where they're at least going to pay her. But I hope she comes back for the next Wonder Woman. I hope she comes back at least for that Amazon uh, TV series spinoff movie we were supposed to be getting. Um, I hope if she doesn't come back, I hope she at least produces. But I, I just wanted to come back. Because she's already directed the first two. She should round up her trilogy. And that's all I have for you guys today. Once again, let me know what you thought of the movie down below. And please stay safe. Be careful. Stay true to yourself. We're all, this is a very trying time. But don't worry. 2020 is almost over. Let's make 2021 the year that this year is supposed to be. Alright you guys. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all again here real, real soon. Bye.